the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get your free financial survival toolkit and find out where to buy gold and silver safely at great prices. Sign up at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. 1490 WGCH. This is Kerry Lutz, and you're listening to the Financial Survival Network, which is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been in business selling gold since 1990, and I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. To find out more, go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080 and get a free quote. Back fresh from Freedom Fest is Andy Hoffman. He's talking about negative interest rates, about rising pressure on the Bernanke to finally start printing money and tell everybody about it. And there's bad news out of China as well. Hey, Andy, you recovered from Freedom Fest. It was an amazing week, and I'm just happy to be back in my quiet home. (laughs) Quiet. Yeah, well, my house is quiet. Everybody's away. And uh, the dog is old, so he didn't make a lot of noise when I came in. But there's a lot of noise going on as far as the economy goes, huh? Yeah, there's now pretty much every economy in the world would be in a recession. And, you know, you could call our economy plus 1% if you want to fudge the numbers or 2% so you can pretend that we're doing better than everyone else. But everyone knows that all the indicators are, are showing that we're negative. We have a negative PMI now. We have negative retail sales. Our unemployment reports have been the worst that I've seen in my life. And it's been like this for six months in a row or pretty much like it. Uh, Japan, they had the worst machine order drop in probably their entire history. China has a negative PMI. Pretty much everyone is in recession. And as a result, the only thing that's holding markets up right now are printing money, propaganda, and market manipulation. We're getting a lot of the former to the money printing. There's no question it's going on unabated. But to hold up the markets, they're going to have to make another announcement soon, aren't they? Yeah, I actually was writing this morning, though, about a few years ago, I started to have a sense about mining stocks, for instance. My sense was that it really didn't matter what was going on, that because of their paper nature and the powers that be in charge, that there actually was a chance that they would be held down indefinitely. I mean, I don't know if that's the, the truth, but it's been so far correct. And I'm now starting to get a similar feeling that no matter what happens in the world, they may not be able, we may not be able to get the Dow Jones down. There is simply that much printing of money by the PPT and buying stocks. I mean, today's a perfect, a perfect day. I've been writing about, you know, the Dow Jones propaganda average and these dead ringer trading patterns like you saw yesterday, like you saw today. It's the same thing. They probably can keep the Dow Jones as, uh, as high as they want. But what they can't do is keep people from losing their jobs and losing their houses. And there's certainly no shortage of that coming from Vegas. You've got whole neighborhoods that I would classify as foreclosure theme parks. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to see when you're there, especially because I, I haven't been there enough to make a comparison. But, uh, you know, I, one thing I noticed was the prices in the hotels. Now, I know it's an expensive city, but I would have to rank that as now the most expensive city I've ever been to in my life. And I would say that probably it's because business is not as good as it used to be. And they need to raise prices on basics like five dollar and sixty eight cent Gatorade uh, to make up the losses in the other business. Oh, you're so right. I mean, I've seen the restaurant prices go way, way up. Like I couldn't believe for for the most basic food items, like you said, and you just see it, they're nickel and diming you to death. And while the city was pretty crowded on the weekend, the guy at the hotel was telling me a lot of people team up four or five, six in a room because they don't have the money to come there separately and stay in their own room. Well, we're in a we're in a global recession, and and even if you want to say, okay, it's not Americans, it's all these foreigners coming in and spending money. What foreigners? Europeans are doing worse than we are, and if, even if you want to bring the China card out, look what we're talking about. I mean, China is in a, is basically in a a recession right now, no matter what they want to say. So there is no way that there's more money being spent by Asians in Vegas than there was a few years ago. So, like you said, they have to make the money up somehow, and. And uh, I think it's by charging $8.42 for a Bud Light draft at California Pizza Kitchen. Yeah, not even a great place, and they're getting that. And 
Interesting you mentioned the Chinese and the Asians. There was a group in the hotel in Bally's. They were Chinese for certain. And you know how Salente is always talking about how Americans walk around looking like bums, you know, and our our parents and our grandparents, you know, they would take pride in the clothing they wore even. Right. Even. Mm -hmm. So I see this Chinese group and they're all, they're not dressed in suits and ties or anything like you used to see the Japanese do. They're in in casual wear, but every one of them was dressed impeccably. You know, they looked respectable. And then I looked around at what was doing at Bally's, which is not my usual venue. It's just like a mall, except that it's got slot machines and table games. But the same uh, clientele in the mall is the same clientele at the hotel. And it really drove home that point that Salenti makes of, of where our culture is heading. And it's it's uh, it's disheartening. Yeah. And don't be surprised when the Chinese go there, too, because, uh, you know, everyone wants this this lifestyle that we have over here. And uh, apparently this lifestyle of, of, of entitlement makes people think that they don't need to present themselves uh, to the world. Yeah. Is that what it is? Thank you for clearing that up because it's bothered me. Like, is it is it just degradation? You know, is it deviancy like uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, you know, defining devi deviancy down? Or is it just decadence because you don't have to work so you could just wear your ratty t-shirt and your ratty jeans and not worry about it, I guess, huh? Yeah, I'd say it's a lack of pride and a lack of pride that uh, has overcome this nation based on what's what's occurred in its economy over the last decade. And also, again, like we're talking about, this is sense of entitlement that we're better than others and that we don't need to, you know, to, to prove anything to anyone. When I sold my business, I told you about this, but in 98, I had worn a suit a jacket and tie to work for 20 something years. And I said, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm not wearing a jacket or tie to work anymore. So I started wearing like jeans and a, a nice shirt. And what I found was that I got dependent upon all the pockets in the jacket to keep my junk. So I had to like go back to the jacket. So I don't wear a tie anymore, but you will see me in a jacket just about every day I go to work. So you can really tell a lot about appearances, about where a culture is heading, I guess is my point. Well, it's not inconsistent with all the other things we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but just give me the gold, give me the silver, and you could keep the fancy designer threads, right? <laughs> yep, being pragmatic. <laughs> and you certainly are not going to want to stand out in the coming economic turmoil. In fact, you want to look poorer than everybody else. You don't want to look better off. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. That's part of the whole protection thing I talk about, is to make sure you do things that are that are going to uh, you know, keep you as far off the grid as possible. Yeah, and if uh, the rest of the neighborhood's eating dog food, at least get down by the bowl and pretend you're doing it too. <laughs> you don't have to eat it. Just make believe that you are and, and pretend that you enjoy it. If, if the rest of them are enjoying it, then you do. <laughs> yeah, like in Down and Out in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Nolte was eating the dog food, so. <laughs> We're talking about negative interest rates, but not just negative real interest rates. We're talking about negative nominal interest rates. Yes, and uh, actually I was just writing about it this morning. You'll see it on Wednesday. I mean, to me, I was talking about, look, I've been a financial analyst for 20 plus years and I'm thinking back to college. I'm thinking back to the CFA program. I never even heard of negative interest rates. Heck, I didn't even hear of negative real rates, let alone negative uh, absolute interest rates. That's how that's how badly the system has collapsed, in my view, because every way I look at this, I am in awe that this could actually happen where people would pay a bank to hold their crappy money yeah. in these institutions that are that are inflating the currency and going out of business while doing it. And then you have for years, I've had people tell me, why would I want gold? It doesn't pay interest. Guess what? Gold now pays more interest than bonds. And it's not just T-bills in the United States. We're talking about two-year bonds in Switzerland that are they're yielding negative 0.43%. I mean, that's not like 0.01. That's like a real thing you've got to pay. They're in Germany, they're negative. Denmark actually now has an official NIRP. They actually took the, net, the official interest rate to negative 0.2%. So that's the government policy. 
And best of all, which I really railed on this morning, was France now has short-term bonds paying negative interest rates, while its socialist, borderline communist government is literally taking the, 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 the country into the ground. And, and people are going to pay Credit Agricole, which I rank as the number one most likely to go bankrupt, to take their their frank, their euros and their I mean absolute insanity. This is the absolute end game here. There is no way anything could get more ridiculous than this. And if anyone doesn't see this, they are just not looking. Well, we saw a lot of people out there in Vegas in complete and total denial. And this is just another example because it's not in anybody's interest to say this system's going to go bye bye. No one wants to confront the reality because then might actually have to do something, might actually have to tell the truth. But I mean, money managers we're talking about on Wall Street. I mean, I, I worked with them for years. They're not that dumb. They're not. I can't imagine that this is actual money managers saying, "I want to own Swiss Swiss bonds." that I have to pay to own. I just can't believe it. There is only one group that could be owning this, and these are the banks themselves, the central banks. Central banks. Hey, think about it. You give yourself a bond that effectively will pay itself off. You'll wind up owing less money when it's paid off than when you got it. So it's a a (laughs) godsend to get rid of the debt that can't be paid off anyway. Maybe it's the ultimate. So we go up to 15% negative interest rates per year and pretty soon that debt doesn't exist anymore but i think that's a uh, highly deflationary and you'd see these too big to fails collapse you know in a moment if if the money supply was really getting depleted in that way because right the too big to fails can't exist without inflation well what i what i do want to bring up is the paradigm of what i was talking about earlier and that's the fact that there are because of all the money printing there are changes that that may never go away. They literally may be able to keep the Dow Jones up here forever. It's not going to help many people. I mean, I think I read that those fifty billion was taken out of the out of stock funds in the last six months. No one owns these things. These are just there for show. And the same, it's just the government. And the same thing goes for these negative interest rates. It's not helping anyone. No one's getting a. No one's borrowing. No one's uh, house prices going up and all this stuff. These are all for show. So. Less and less people, need, and more and more people need to realize that these markets have absolutely zero uh, relationship to the to the real world. And if gold were an actual piece of paper instead of a piece of rock, the same thing would happen. I can guarantee you that they will be able to, to hold GLD to where they want for as long as they want. The problem is there's a thing called gold, which is not GLD, which they will not be able to do that with. And when that happens... You won't even see, you won't see GLD scrolling across the CNB screen. It just won't be there anymore. No one will be watching it. And the same with the comics. And that's the Achilles heel of the system. Absolutely. And I had a guest on, Dan Ammerman. Right. And he's saying, and he's pretty knowledgeable, but he thinks there'll be windfall profit taxes on gold and silver and that the government is going to outlaw cash, physical cash, which will mean that what are you going to do with your gold and silver? Because they're tracking every transaction. Okay. Okay. And that's a good question. You know, I think it's a, it's a terrible question. You know why? Because (laughs) he should know better. It's a good question for someone who's not an expert in the field, but for, for, but it's no different than to me, someone saying, Oh, well you can't eat gold. Look, I wrote a piece about, I don't know, three, four months ago, which encompasses the answers to all these silly questions. I get the same question Mm -hmm. over and over again. It's called priceless precious metals or worthless dollars, okay? The government is not just going to tomorrow put on windfall taxes on gold. First of all, how are they even going to find out what you paid for it, let Mm -hmm. alone put windfall taxes on it, let alone that no one is selling it. My God, no one sells to Miles Franklin anything ever. So who's (laughs) going to be getting windfall profit taxes, okay? The government would only consider something like that or confiscation, even more ridiculous, yeah. after the dollar has been crashing and gold has been soaring. At that point, would you rather have priceless precious metals or would you rather have collapsed worthless dollars? It is so freaking stupid when people yeah. say, oh, I, I won't own gold. What do you think they're going to do it tomorrow? No, they will do it, it after the system is done and then you worry about that. Well, look at it. Even if they were to do it tomorrow, it ain't going to work. All right. 
they're not going to ban bartering and they're not going to be able to ban currency because they could try it. They could do whatever they want, but then the free market will emerge, which a free market is a black market, right? Of course. What's freer than the black market when you think about it? What are they they're gonna ban? They're gonna ban the use of the only thing that anyone wants. <laughs> like I'll go to the store and they'll say, uh, "I'll say I like red." Okay, do you have a silver coin? Uh, yes, I do. No, I can't take that. Okay, then we all starve. Of course, they're gonna take yeah, the silver coin because I mean, yeah, I I didn't get into it with them, but I just wanted to get your feedback on it because I said to my to my thinking, ain't gonna happen. I don't believe they're going to eliminate cash. They have to make people want to give up cash and i don't think in the u.s i think there's a good 10 15 percent of the people a lot of them because of my old uh, business when we used to freeze their bank accounts they don't trust the bank they don't want accounts they want physical currency in their hands and they're just not going to get rid of that so that's my take on it as well yeah. but and i figured i get, I'd I'd get run these it questions you. all the time on this topic People yeah. email me about this thing. They say, I hear they're going to be making digital currency. And if so, will that make gold obsolete, blah, blah, blah. And I write back, I go, first of all, what the heck is digital currency? What do you think we have right now? <laughs> right now is digital currency. It's yeah. backed by nothing. It's produced by computers. So why, why? And my point is people are always trying to find reasons why to bash gold. And I'm telling, right in front of them, I'm showing them, we have negative interest rates now. Gold yeah, actually on, pays guys. more interest than bonds. And you're still telling me that gold's a barbarous relic. Yeah, look, ridiculous. It, it, there's, it go, look, gold has been money for 5,000 years. You know it, I know it. It will continue to be money. And uh, a year from now, you won't believe what the world's going to look like. Hey, and the other thing, just one final wrap-up observation on Freedom Fest. You know, a number of gold dealers there, but everybody at Freedom Fest gets it. They understand where the money's heading, which just shows that gold, sound money, and freedom go hand in hand. And those 2,500 people there understood it. And hopefully a lot more are going to be understanding it before it's too late. Yeah, well, most of them are going to be forced to understand it when it's too late. So you and I and a few others are going to do our best to pull a few of, a few of us on the train. Yeah, and we have. And we definitely yeah. have. So don't be frustrated because everyone else will understand exactly what's wrong with the system when they have to, when they have no other choice. And, Correct. And if you can understand it earlier, you have an advantage. Excellent. And on that note, Andy, uh, next week, you be well. And, and uh, we'll, we'll just keep watching. Great. Take it easy. Bye.